Welcome to episode two of the third season here at Hull City in this road to glory. We are fifth in the championship after one game. Solid victory in that first game. I'm pleased with that. And thank you for your feedback in the first episode yesterday. Uh, there's been some... Well, the, the same kind of ideas seem to be filtering their way through. Those being uh, signing a striker, most notably actually, Ivan Tony. Because Brentford had a poor year last year, you guys are quite keen on me potentially signing Ivan Tony. So I'm going to look into that. There's some mention of a potential workaround with trying to get Conor Gallagher in on loan with regards offering actually a larger percentage from myself towards his wages. Sometimes that works in getting the player to agree a loan deal. So it's something we could explore. Uh, Solis is on the back burner now. You guys are pretty sure that uh, we should wait until we're at least Premier League level, uh, at least our first season in the Prem. We're trying to sign someone like him. I don't have the money to sign him anyway uh, at this particular stage. And then loaning in a youngster like Jack Clark, Harvey Elliott or Emil Smith-Rowe. So I'm looking into those options. I'm also contemplating... And we thought about this like when he first came in because of his height. Moving Charlie Barnett to Cam. And that being where Ivan Tony would fit in. So I, I'm i almost on board with that, you know. Wallace has the potential to be special as his tag. So I definitely want to keep him in the starting lineup. Meaning that I think George Honeyman is going to drop to the bench. And when we bring either Tony or uh, Connor in, they then slot into the starting lineup. And either Barnett moves to, to Cam and we have Ivan Tony, or um, Connor comes in and we drop Gunn to the bench. So we'll wait and see how things progress in this episode and throughout this window. I'm intrigued to see what happens next. Generally, the idea is that we shouldn't we shouldn't sell George Honeyman. We should keep him as backup. And I'm I'm aboard with that. It's definitely a, a worthwhile idea. Uh, we shall actually just change Wilkes back to a right winger by default, or right mid. Probably right right wing. What's... 35 weeks to right mid. Yeah, definitely right wing then. Definitely right wing. And that will only take a couple of weeks, and then that will help him get some extra boosts out on the right-hand side. Uh, I am now retraining uh, Barnet in his uh, passing stats. As you, Well, actually, he's, he's kind of... A, I'm training him as a complete striker, so it's training his shooting, his passing, and his dribbling, which are his three lowest attributes. Also, training Lewis Potter's passing at your request as well, and uh, Wallace's uh, defending at your request as well. So, I'm trying to basically make all three of them more well-rounded so that they suit the position that they're in better and can be utilised elsewhere too. So, that's Hopefully going to work very well for us. We start today with a game against Nottingham Forest, who have recently come down from the Premier League. We have a game in the Cup, and it's Bournemouth, which we'll play as well. And I'll probably play Norwich. It'll probably be Norwich the game that we play at the end of the month, rather than Birmingham or Cardiff. I'll wait and see how things transpire throughout the course of this uh, transfer window. We, we may split the rest of August into two, depending on how things go. We'll wait and see. I might need, There might be a transfer offer that comes in that sees one of our best players leave for a decent fee, and then I'm really going to need your guys' help. So you can see Forrest starting lineup on the right-hand side there. Diallo in goal. Adams up top with Carvalho sat behind him. Sami Amiobi on the left. Uh, Lolly on the right. Bashiru and Yates in the middle. Figueredo and Worrell through the uh, centre-back positions. Blackett left-back. Lang at right-back. I'm going to jump straight to the action and hopefully get a decent start or continue our decent start to the season after our victory in yesterday's episode. Do please continue to drop the videos a thumbs up if you're enjoying this series. And of course, continue to let me know your feedback down below in the comments section if you think there's anything I should do. There was a massive uh, wave of thumbs up on a comment saying check the free agents. I had like 250 thumbs up. I checked the free agents. Unfortunately... Nothing in there that's worth note. So, unfortunately, that's not an avenue we can pursue this particular season. But certainly moving forward in the youth-only career mode that we're going to do at some point in FIFA 21, that definitely will be something that we take uh, use of more often than not. But they're talking about Charlie Barnett. He scored two in the last game. 
I'd love it if he scored two again. Here's Sammy Amiobi, played in behind for Forrest. Don't know what alterations they've made to the squad since getting relegated. Whether they lost a player to uh, a side higher up in the division. One of their better players from last year. Perhaps, I'm not sure. But certainly the team they're playing against us today isn't that impressive. Certainly, if this is the squad they played with last year, you can understand why they ended up getting relegated. Because it's not that threatening. Che Adams up top is probably their best player, I would imagine. Wallace will play it through there to Dave Gunn, who's got support arriving from Greg Doherty, and he loves to get forward in that box-to-box -box role and try and get the odd shot away. He did so there, but unfortunately, the defender was in the way. Joao Cancelo, Joao Cancelo, Joao Carvalho will certainly be difficult to play against in that cam roll. Oh, it's lovely footwork by Barnett. Unfortunately, the defender kind of read it. Malik Wilkes trying to find some space for a shot as well, but he can't get the shot away This on this occasion. Certainly starting on the front foot here against Forest. You imagine they'll be towards the top of the table come the end of the season if they've just come down from the Prem. But as I say, their squad doesn't appear to be that strong. So, or at least their starting eleven doesn't appear to be that strong. We'll wait and see where they end the season. But we're aiming for the highest of heights this year. So, fingers crossed, we can... Ah, oh, come on. Fingers crossed, we can end up in the top two, even if they are with us or not. I mean, Emmanuel's just bullied Blackett off that, and then Blackett almost did the same to him. Well, I'll go across there to Wallace. A little bit extra space. Out to Lewis Potter. Charlie Barnett trying hard to keep possession and gifted it back again. And Keen Lewis Potter will not pass up an opportunity like that. Not the most flash of goals. Little bit scrappy, struggling to hold on to it with Josh Emmanuel, struggling to hold on to it with Charlie Barnett, but somehow it pops free for Keen Lewis Potter. And he's not going to miss a chance like that. He actually has phenomenal finishing now, Keen Lewis Potter, because of the way we've been training him. That's the sort of goal you tend to see me concede, not the AI, misplacing a pass straight to an opposition player, but thumped home. Very, very well finished indeed. No chance for the keeper. And we lead by a goal to nil against recently relegated Forest. That'll do nicely. Doherty. Back to Emmanuel. Forward to Mallet Wilkes. Dave Gunn is there, but we'll use Wallace. Then go to Barnett. And Gunn's made the run forward. Not seen as much first team football as he might have liked, Dave Gunn. He and Pinto at one moment in time were quite close in rating. And, uh, well, one has advanced at a massive rate of knots. And the other certainly hasn't. Although, obviously, there's been a... Uh, a massive difference in the volume of first team football available to each of them. Sammy Amiobi here, though, could be causing us problems going the other way. We've defended pretty well so far. As West Brom take a 2 1 lead against Middlesbrough, another relegated side from the Premier League last season. Oh my god. Everybody ignored it. I thought that I was waiting for the keeper to. No! To just jump and tip that over the bar. And in the end, he just stood there and left it. Let the forest man misjudge the flight as well and jump underneath it. And is he onside here, Malik Wilkes? He is not. Oh, clean through and away, but the wrong side of the line. Well, that was dangerous at the back post. But thankfully, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much of an offside that is. If anything, it looks the other way around. It looks like he should be onside. Lino, have a word with yourself, mate. Che Adams off for Forrest. And who's that coming on? To try and score the equaliser is Liz Muset, the former Bournemouth man, who we have in our next league game. Sammy Amiobi from that same highlight. Corner for Forrest and Lolly to take it. They're making another change as Sammy Amiobi goes off and Pantsil comes on. Little and large there on the byline or on the touchline. Lolly delivers the cross. It's a decent one. And Moose sits underneath it, but thankfully cleared away by a defender. Bashiru to Worrell. Here's Figueredo into Lis Moose. Just has the ball. Oh, it's offside because it just has the ball taken away from him. Forrest ooh, looking dangerous, but I'm going to try and get myself another goal. I'm going to put Scott on, drop Barnett to camp, and then move Wilkes there. Ah, uh, it's not... Hmm... How can I do this to ensure that maybe Lewis Potter at Cam? Do it that way. I could I could go for Wallace at Cam and then uh, move or bring George Honeyman on. 
but I'd rather move Wallace there and then have more attacking, more genuine attacking options through the middle there. Right, okay. 22 minutes to go. These changes could see us extend our lead. I hope they do. Elder. Forward to Wallace. And inside to Keen Lewis Potter, who's now in that central role. Doherty forwards to Scott. Carabao Cup on the, on the horizon, but... I don't know. It's not really a competition that we need to prioritise at the minute, is it? Getting promoted is certainly the thing that will occupy our minds more so than anything else. And James Scott off the bench very nearly gave us the goal to seal a second win to start the season. Couldn't quite get there for that header. Barnett, oh, struck very well indeed, but blocked well indeed as well. Your new device is not going to have the dribbling or the shooting to cause much problems from there. But is he onside here, Malik Wilkes? He is this time. Oh, that second heavy touch was, well, heavy. But Wallace, oh, I can't find the space. Malik Wilkes' touch was super heavy on two occasions. That's a lovely interception by Yates as Josh Emmanuel was in behind and looking to make some moves. We've won it back again, though. I'm going to have to go out wide. And we'll go out wide again. And Wilkes, I see the man arriving at the back post. It's Keen Lewis Potter. Oh, the keeper tried his best, but couldn't keep it out. It is to be a second. It was Charlie Barnett that scored both against Bristol City. It's Keen Lewis Potter that scored both against Nottingham Forest. Very good volley. Met superbly on the left foot there. Definitely the right thing to go out. And nobody tracks his run till too late there, number five. Struck at the keeper, who, to be fair to him, is perhaps unlucky there. He's gotten a big... What? arm I think to the ball was it his arm or was it his head it was his face he got a big face to the ball but unfortunately for him off the underside of the bar and over the line it's to be back-to-back -back victories to start the championship season for us and hopefully we can keep this vein of form running well not just for the rest of the month but for the whole season out to Elder Birmingham Birmingham turning up against Norwich although actually Norwich had already scored two which I hadn't noticed Norwich aside that certainly will be wanting to get themselves promoted in every season that they find themselves in the championship in this save. They and Bournemouth haven't really shown much sign of getting towards the automatic promotion spots in the uh, time that we've been in this save. Villa and Leeds bossed the league last year, didn't they? 110 and 103, I think, points for both of them respectively last season. Leeds, to be fair, did well to close Villa down by as much as they did because earlier on, in, at the very beginning of the season, Villa were just flying. Something like 14 wins from the opening 16 games. So, if anything, only getting 110 points was actually a bit of a poor showing from Aston Villa. We, however, so far this year, have not had any poor showings. A 2-0 victory in Game 1 and a 2-0 victory in Game 2 have certainly set us up very well for the uh, opening section of the season and getting a solid result against the recently relegated side as well proves that we're the real deal this year. I certainly expect us to be the real deal this year. Anyway, uh, Gray has gone out on loan or will now go out on loan provided he agrees contract terms with uh, Mechelen in uh, Belgium, I think. They're Belgium. And you can see the scout reports come back on Ivan Tony actually, so I'm quite intrigued to see what he's worth. Uh, we'll delegate that. I don't want a loan to buy, thank you. But if you'll agree just a loan, you can have Reese Main. We'll have a look at Ivan Tony in a moment. And Brandon Fleming has completed his progression in the current role, inverted win back. And I think 68 looks like it's as far as he's going to grow this season. So still a, a decent reserve left back. And to be fair, always plays better than that 68 rating uh, would indicate. But... Certainly would be needed to be improved upon once we get to the Premier League. Uh, Scott wants to play in this game. Actually, I'll, I will rotate for this Sheffield Wednesday game as we will simulate this cup fixture. But what is Ivan Tony Rader? 75 rated. Looks very good physically. And technically better than most of what we've got. And actually not that expensive at all. I'm starting to lean towards getting Ivan Tony in as a striker. And dropping Charlie Barnett to that cam roll. Offer a transfer fee. In fact, can I offer a player swap? Is there anyone that I would consider letting go? Adelican. Would you like Adelican plus, plus three and a half million pounds maybe? Are you open to that perhaps? We'll wait and see what they say. Be intrigued. They don't want Adelican. Uh, I'll offer a different player then. 
So I'm certainly not going to offer you. I didn't actually see or think to check what players they wanted in re uh, in return. Ah, uh, Josh McGuinness isn't really going to be worth much. It's still going to... Uh, let me remove that exchange player and offer a different one. I want to offer someone that's actually worth something so that it, it does take a bit off the, the valuation because we are going to need to bring in a couple of players. Hmm. I don't, I'm don't. i apprehensive to use James Scott, actually. Fullback-wise, there's not really anyone that I'd want to lose. Centre-back-wise, not really anyone that I'd want to lose. It kind of is. It kind of is that way, isn't it? It's really a delicate or someone that's not worth that much. So maybe McGuinness plus six. That would, It's about what his valuation is. Are they interested in McGuinness? They're not. They're going to stick to a £9 million valuation. Okay. Well, if we're just talking money, how about seven? Seven and a half. I'll take that. I think this may well be certainly one of the very few occasions where I've actively signed a former Peterborough United player. Not something as a Cambridge United fan. I like to do that often. But Ivan Tony was certainly a highly requested option from you guys, considering his... Uh, or Brentford's poor performance last season. He'd like a crucial role. Three-year contract deal is, well, agreeable for me, but if we can add a fourth year to it, then that would be great. He's on 39 grand a week, which is a lot for a championship player, to be honest. I know Brentford are a side that should be pushing for promotion, but still, until you get there, I'll be sure that uh, I can really stretch that far. I'll offer you a signing bonus of 30 grand and wages of 30. And they'll accept that. Okay, great. Well, that's him in then. Ivan Tony in to play at striker. Now, does that mean that Barnett drops to Cam? I think it does. Charlie Barnett. How long is it going to take to retrain you as a Cam? He's already got centre mid there as one of his positions, which is why hopefully it shouldn't take that long. 21 weeks. 21 weeks. That's agreeable. I could change him to a centre forward first. Maybe that would lessen at least the change or drop in his boosts for the time being in that in that role. Right, Ivan Tony's certainly going to go straight in the starting lineup. Then you imagine. Uh, and then do I put Dave Gunn on the? Yeah, I'll put Gunn on the on the bench ahead of Main. Right, I'm pleased with that. Thank you for the suggestion. That is one of the highest requested signings that you guys have actually asked me, for me to do in recent times with regards one player being a definitive go and get this guy. So Ivan Tony is in. Now actually, nah, we'll do it in a minute. I'll, uh, I'll go and figure out what development plan I want to use for him. I am going to rotate for this game uh, and we'll put Adelikin in, we'll put Jack Barr in. I said that Scott could start, actually, didn't I? So he can go in and actually Dave Gunn is going to get the start again here. We'll prioritise Wallace over uh, Honeyman, purely because Wallace is, because of Wallace's potential. Um, I might leave Doherty in there, actually. Emmanuel out for Bayer, McLaughlin in for Burke. We haven't had any interest recently for Burke or Device, at least not today, anyway. Um, I'll leave the keeper as it is. Yep, that'll do us for now. Right, let's see what we can do in this uh, simmed game against Sheffield Wednesday, ahead of uh, the game against Bournemouth back in the Championship. And we are through to the next round of the Carabao Cup. So thus, some of those fringe players will get more first-team football and the opportunity to continue to uh, maintain their sharpness and grow. Scott is thankful for the opportunity. And Main is going to go out on loan to Almeria for a year. Good. Okay, everything seems to be falling in place so far this season. I'm really pleased with this. I'm going to go continue to train. And then I'll see you in the game against Bournemouth unless anything happens in the transfer window. I had a transfer bid from Brighton for Callum Elder. And initially, my brain went, hmm, Premier League side bidding for one of my higher rated players. We're going to have to consider this. Then I checked to see where they were in the Premier League table. I'll show you where they are in the Premier League table. They're not in the Premier League table. They're in our division. And I know I've just poached a, a, a rival's player in Brentford, but... We're wanting to compete with Brighton at the top of the table to challenge for promotion. And selling one of your best players to a direct promotional rival, promotion rival, whilst Brentford have done it to me, I'm not willing to sell one of my players to a promotion rival. Sorry, Brighton, if you were still Premier League, I probably would have negotiated that and looked to sell him to you. But you got yourselves relegated, and I'm not having it. So... 
Callum Elder stays as a Hull City player. You can see Bournemouth's starting lineup on the screen there. Lerma and Billing as the two in midfield with Danuma Gruneveld, Solanke and Brooks as the front three. They're always a tough team to play. We genuinely struggle against them every time we play them. They're just a bogey side in almost every single save I do, Bournemouth. But I want to get the better of them. And this is the season where we're going to have to get the better of teams like that if we want to be taken seriously as genuine title contenders. Let's go and win at the Vitality. Ivan Tony has the arrival of Callum Elder on the left. And Charlie Barnett is the man that finds himself in the middle. Oh, Charles! Come on, my friend! You're on your own. That's a free header from six yards. That's where his height doesn't help. If that's the other way around and Ivan Tony's underneath that, he's getting a goal inside five minutes on his debut. Oh, brilliant to cut Bournemouth open that quickly, though. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come. But we will have to be more clinical in front of goal. You can't pass up too many opportunities like that and still expect to get a result. Solanke into Billing. Ah, it's opened up nicely for Brooks. And that's 1-0 Bournemouth. Well, we nearly scored. Oh, hello. A little bit of afters. Even George Long's getting involved there. A <sighs> little bit of afters, but we missed our clinical one-on-one -on -one chance. They have not missed theirs. Oh, I just ran the wrong way with the defender. 1-0 Bournemouth. Aye, aye, aye. And we trail to Bournemouth again. We've been here before. Solanke. That's a lovely ball across to Brooks. Oh, and the little fake turn has done really well. And Billick's in. And he's in. Oh, the keeper. Odds. Odds choice of animation from the goalkeeper there. There's a nice turn inside. I thought I was going to get there with the block, to be honest. It's gone through the defender's legs. And keeper's kind of... I need to sit. Still not the best of angles. Are we going to get to see enough of the keeper? He kind of goes up when it's low. Bournemouth really are just an awful bogey side, aren't they? I wish they got promoted last season so I didn't have to play them this year. Or I wish we got promoted last season so I didn't have to play them this year. Oh, if we go up, I hope Bournemouth stay in the championship because it's just six points we are not going to get at whatever level we're playing at when Bournemouth are in the same division as us, isn't it? Try and get that through there, but it's a poor pass and Rico cuts it out comfortably. Rico. Again, I'm finding myself going backwards, camped on the edge of my own box. Billing. Solanke. Nice tackle by Burke. Right, quick counter, lads. Come on, let's go. King Lewis Potter is there. Let's get ourselves a goal back before half time, shall we? Ivan Tony. Lovely return ball. Taken in his stride brilliantly by King Lewis Potter. And this should be and is 2 1. Ivan Tony with an assist on debut. Albeit King Lewis Potter doesn't want to celebrate with him. He wants to celebrate with Greg Doherty instead. We're back in the game. Nice pass by Ivan Tony. Three-star weak foot, three-star skills. We can certainly improve that with a development plan. Most importantly, the weak foot, to be honest. But back in the game before half-time, that's definitely given us some hope for the second 45. Billing. Back to Stacey again. Oh, Elder tripped on a Bournemouth man in the midfield there. And it's going to cost us a goal. Philip Billing scores again. Elder just trips on David Brooks, I think it is. And as everybody sprints in to try and get to the ball, Billing holds his run on the edge of the box. Just holds position. And, well, it's obvious where he's going to kick that, isn't it, then? And, oh, very close to it, George Long. But not close enough, unfortunately. And with half an hour to play, Bournemouth have their two-goal advantage back again. Back to the drawing board, boys. Jefferson Lerma driving inside, perhaps looking for goal. Centrally to Njoli. Good footwork from him. And he could get in for a fourth here. We've tackled him. Can we go on a counter and get a second? Rob Wallace is on the move there, Charlie Barnett, but I'm not going to get it to him. Keen Lewis Potter is here, though. And Malik Wilkes is available on the right, but not really in a position to be found. Tony, lovely turn. Ivan Tony on debut has an assist and now a goal too. And with three minutes to go, we have the chance of a point at the vitality. And Ivan Tony is certainly making an impression on his debut, isn't he? Nice touch, nice turn, 
Nice finish on his weak foot as well. And the assist came on his left. You guys might have pulled out a banger here. Jefferson Lerma. Oh, if I could just have got to him there to take that away from him. Then the counter-attack was available. But with time ticking down now, that's it. That will be game. Philip Billing has gotten man of the match, as we expected he would do. Is he onside there? He is, David Brooks. It might even... Oh, it might even be four. No, we've kept that in, but... Oh, jeeps. <laughs> it doesn't matter what's going to happen next because the whistle is going to go 3-2. That's probably the most competitive we've been against Bournemouth. Albeit, we still weren't that competitive. It's definitely the closest scoreline I can recall against Bournemouth in recent memory. Forest losing again. They are certainly not having the best of starts to their season at a lower level. A transfer offer for your device as we come back from Ajax. A Dutch side in for our Dutch captain and it's Ajax. Like, what what Dutchman wouldn't want to play for Ajax? Ah, uh, try and negotiate some more if I can. 16 and a half they've come up to. You guys are going to have to pull me out here because I think we're going to need ah, 16 and a half again is their final offer. I can't turn that down. Jordi Device looks like he's going to leave. Jordi Device, perhaps. Oh, a transfer offer from Ghent. Oh, that one I can turn down. That one I can turn down. But, oh, and a transfer offer for George Honeyman too. That's from Mallorca. Now, you guys have asked for Honeyman to stay. So, Honeyman will stay. I can't remember if he's still on the transfer list. Is he still there? Have I, did I take him off? Or did I not? Did I refrain from putting him on? I did refrain from putting I've removed him for the transfer list, regardless of whether he was on or not. Right, up next for us is Cardiff in a Sims game, and I'll see you then. Device sold. Reese Main out on loan to Almeria. Jordi Device, our captain, is gone. Lads, I need a centre back option, please. A centre back option. Please, and rather quickly too. We've got Derby next in the cup. What? I'm, well, I'm going to split today's episode into two then. Uh, the plan was to record as, as far ahead as I can and then stream later in the day. What I think I'm actually going to do is get this video up, then stream and then record again a little bit later so that I can still make tomorrow's video uh, before tomorrow but i'll just switch around when i was going to record the second video and the stream so the stream will be li live now as you see this video at three o'clock and i'll be waiting for your feedback in the comment section for this video before i move any further than this game against cardiff then so we will play cardiff city here as the third played game of the day and please lads in the comment section with my 24 odd million pounds 25 odd million pounds available to me we're now diverting our attention away from a... Well, maybe I could still try and loan Clark, Elliot, or Smith Rowe, etc. Maybe Conor Gallagher, we could try that again. But certainly first, I now need a centre-back signing, please. Because my captain is no longer my captain. He's gone to Ajax, and you can understand why he's done that. We nearly, very nearly, sold Pinto to Ajax last season. But time ran out for them on deadline day. Yeah, it's bidding early this time for the man that they want from Hull City and getting that man. We will go and play Cardiff City at home. Hope to get three points in the league and then hopefully you guys can tell me what centre-back to buy. Right, Cardiff then. Alex Smithy's in goal. Leandro Bakuna, Aidan Flint, Curtis Nelson and Joe Bennett as a back four. Kiefer Moore leading the line again. We played Cardiff towards the end of last season. They were challenging for a playoff spot. They didn't get it. We were challenged for a playoff spot. We didn't get it either. They've had a decent start to the season. We've got six points from our opening three with two wins and a defeat. That's an awful pass, but thankfully it will reach, will reach Reese Burke. They've got four points from their opening three games of the season. One of each potential result. A win, a draw, and a defeat. Hopefully it'll be two defeats for them at the end of this game and not two defeats for us. Here's Josh Murphy, though, trying to cause us some problems down the line. And Joe Bennett gets the ball in, but Emmanuel should deal with that well enough and has done. And Barnett will get to the loose ball. Just needs to get away from Bennett here and has done nicely to do that. And Doherty's bursting forward. And, well, Malik Wilkes needs to watch the offside line, but he has gotten back. Now, Ivan Tony has really good jumping. 
Not that he's going to get the chance to utilise it because the cross didn't go where I wanted it to. From the corner, though, and Ivan Tony is in that central role. Have we found our new Josh McGuinness style corner threat? Rhys Burke across here to Greg Doherty. Out of his feet. Oh, shot was on target. Missed the first man, but blocked by the second. <sighs> Starting on the front foot, though, against Cardiff, but they're also on their toes. And here comes Jota on the counter attack from my corner. Jota for Cardiff. Into Dalmeida. Oh, good one too. He's still got the support there. He might not need it. He's turned well. Jota. Oh, that's a good drop of the shoulder. And Cardiff lead. Volks with the goal from my corner. Cardiff City get the 1-0 advantage. Elder. Oh, no, that's good football. And Dalmeida's in again. Give me. Oh, it is a foul. A foul. And Cardiff have the opportunity from the free kick to score a second to give themselves a little bit of daylight, similar to Bournemouth. Something from the training ground, maybe? Or is he going to shoot? He's going for goal. He's smacked it as hard as he can, right against the wall. Out for a corner instead, then. Zota, who probably would have preferred to take that free kick, now taking the set piece. And, well, not quite worked how they anticipated there, either. Lewis Potter. I see Malik Wilkes could make the run into space here. It's a ping. Slightly over hit, but Malik will keep this in, I pray, and does do so well. And delivers. A good ball. Oh, Tony got there, but couldn't get enough on it. What a breakaway goal that would have been. A full stretch, Ivan Tony. Leaning his head up. Just, can I get there? Yes is the answer, but not with enough purchase to send it in the back of the net. Murphy around the corner nicely to Dalmeida. Back to Murphy. Emmanuel. I was trying to dupe him into cutting back so I could get the tackle in. Like that, basically. Looking for Malik Wilkes. Not the best of balls because there was a defender in. What? What? No! What? I don't, I don't even know. Is that Reese Burke? Don't tell me I'm going to... Who was it? Oh, it's Wallace. It's Rob Wallace. What? I don't even see what happened there. Did he just... Did he just... Oh, no, he went down earlier when he missed that, when he challenged for a header. I didn't even see that happen. I didn't see him stay down. God, Wallace, please don't be up for too long. They should just give me possession back here. And they have done. So fair play to them. Ripple of applause from the, uh, from the fans. But if that's a long-term injury, then that changes our transfer plans further still from where we are. Don't you dare blow your half-time whistle now, ref! Oh, God! 1-0 <sighs> Cardiff at half-time. We've lost one of our most exciting prospects in the centre of midfield. Potential to be special was Wallace's uh, tag. Hopefully this injury, A, isn't that long, and B, doesn't affect his potential growth. Folks, I love that. Doherty says Tar very much. Unfortunately, they've got it back again. Jose Maria Jimenez has gone to Bayern Munich from Atletico Madrid. Josh Murphy, I expect to go back up wide and has done. And Bennett forced into the corner. Murphy could deliver from here. He's got Bennett back and uses him well. Oh, tries to cross. It cannons off Wilkes. Honeyman brings that down. Just, just, just able to turn and keep possession. Ivan Tony. Look at Malik Wilkes. Lovely ball. I tell you what, I've been impressed with Ivan Tony so far. Can he get himself in the box here to get on the edge of this? In fact, yes, he got on the end of this is what I meant to say, not the edge of this, but he has found himself on the edge of the box and Ivan Tony equalises. One of the best impacts we've had from a new signing for a little while here on the channel, Ivan Tony is proving to be a very good acquisition. A goal and an assist on debut, albeit unfortunately in a defeat. But now an equalising goal here against Cardiff with half an hour to still win it. Absolute bargain at seven and a half million pounds. McLaughlin. Cross to Elder. Lewis Potter. Nicely to Charlie Barnett. Tony's there. Support arriving. Need to get the ball out of his feet quickly. Look at Mallet Wilkes. Look at the space for Mallet Wilkes, more importantly. And duck inside on that left. And bury this, please. No, straight at the keeper. Malik. You're not going to get a better chance, mate. You really aren't. Ivan Tony played in. Oh, but... He can't get it to Keen Lewis Potter. Silva tackled well by Elder. Come on, find the pass to Charlie Barnett on this case, please. Barnett's in. Oh, that's how you finish. That's how you finish. Charlie Barnett. Foot right through the ball. 
rocket into the back of the net. Scenes at the end of the game here at the KCOM. We tried to get that goal for a long time. And well, emphatic the finish. Ivan Tony with another goal and an assist in a game. But the keeper with no chance there. The shot power just far too much from Barnett. Foot right through it, ever rising. That's how you win a game of football. Ivan Tony now going off for James Scott at the end after another crucial, crucial action in the game. So we saw that we get the victory. A contribution with a goal, a contribution with assist. In game one and game two for Ivan Tony at Hull City. Even if he doesn't do anything for the rest of the month. Or even for the rest of the calendar year. That's a hell of an introduction to the club for Ivan Tony. Now can you guys find me a centre-back that can have a similar impact on the starting lineup? Maybe so. Maybe so. We shall wait and see. But we've won three of our opening five games. Sorry, our opening four games of this season. But nine points is still only good enough for seventh spot at the minute. West Brom and Brighton both winning all of their games. Now, how long is Wallace out for? Four weeks. That's managed. It was concussion. He was holding his shin, but he's got concussion. That's odd. I don't think I've ever seen a player get concussion on FIFA. That's really peculiar. Really peculiar indeed. Um... I will advance just the extra two days to this game against Birmingham, just in case anything else happens transfer window-wise. We've got scout reports back, which is what we were waiting for. Chelsea want Barnett! He's got a release clause of £10.5 million. Chelsea want Charlie Barnett. I can't help but feel that that would be a bad move for his career. At 72 rated, he's not going to get first team football. I'm not going to do anything with that. I need you guys to tell me whether to accept that or not. Or whether to offer him a new contract or not. Because at £10.5 million pound release clause, we might end up losing him anyway. A bid for Elia Andrew from Leganes. Which I will reject. We want Andrew to stay as things stand. Scout reports back on Emil Smith-Rowe at 75 rated. Certainly could be useful out wide. Scout report back on Harvey Elliott at 75 rated. Certainly could be useful out wide. These would all be potential low knees. And Jack Clark, 73 rated. Not as good, but certainly would be useful out wide. And Wilkes' position change is now complete. Still waiting for Charlie Barnett's position change to be complete. Stays as a 78 rated right winger. Oh, dearie me. What on earth? Charlie Barnett with a bid from Chelsea. I do, I tell you now, I do not want to accept that bid. But if you guys feel that that's a, something I should do, then I have to do it. And it would leave us again, now that we've bought Ivan Tony in, relying on. James Scott as my backup striker. Oh, deary me. Adelican, still no interest in him. Still no interest in Josh McGuinness. Still no interest in Billy Chadwick or Elliot Bonds or Harvey Cartwright. I can't seem to move any of these guys on. Ay, ay, ay. Right, I'm going to save it here. Edit this video, get it up for you. Go and stream and then record a little bit later on this evening. Once you guys have told me what the hell to do, I need a centre-back, please, and a decision about that Charles Barnett transfer bid. Leave your comment. Also, thumbs up other comments you agree with so that the more popular options rise to the top. That's the best way to do it. It's how to... We've done it most recently, and it certainly worked. So please do continue to do that. And fingers crossed, we can make the right decisions for the team, and we can still get ourselves promoted out of the championship this season. I am nervous about what comes next. I'll see you later.